Hi guys, and welcome to Family Storytime. I'm Mr. Drake, and I have one book picked out for us today, and it goes along with our summer reading program theme, Imagine Your Story, which deals with using our imagination. Do you ever use your imagination? Hmm, well after this story, you might just wanna give it a crack. Alrighty, let's just jump into the story. is called The Whisper, and it is written and illustrated by Pamela Zarinsky. And she was winner of two Caldecott honors. The Whisper. There once was a little girl who loved stories. She loved how the words and pictures took her to new and secret places that existed in a world all on her own. The characters became her friends, and quite often she grew to love them. One afternoon, while waiting for school to be dismissed, the little girl noticed a mysterious book perched high on a single shelf. What's that book? she asked her teacher. That is a magical book of stories, replied her teacher. It was a gift from my grandmother when I was just about your age. I have an idea. Would you like to borrow it for the night? Oh, yes, please, thank you, said the little girl. Just as the clock struck three, the teacher gave her the book. And with great anticipation, the little girl sprinted out the door and ran all the way home. Oh, what's happening to her book? It looks like there might be some magic involved. Once home, the little girl greeted her dog and ate supper, and when she was just about to burst with excitement, she escaped to her room to read. The little girl opened the book and began turning through the pages one by one. Each picture was more beautiful and curious than the next. By the time she arrived at the very last page, she could scarcely see for her for her eyes were filled with tears. Where were the words? Where were the stories? It's just not a book of stories without any words, she thought. Do you think it's not a story without any words? As the little girl paged through the wordless book, she heard the wind blow, and then a small whisper. Dear little girl, don't be disappointed. You can imagine the words. You can imagine the stories. Start with a few simple words and imagine from there. Remember, beginnings, middles, and ends of stories can always be changed and imagined differently. There are never any rules, rights, or wrongs in imagining. Imagining just is. The whisper sounded so knowing and wise to the little girl that she opened the book to the first page and began. At first, it felt difficult to imagine a story so she looked harder at the picture. Are the bears best friends, she wondered? Maybe the blue bear is bringing honey as a gift. Bears love honey. Blue Bear's Visit. Now that's a good title, she thought. Then she began to tell herself a story. Blue Bear arrived on the first day of spring. He promised. Dun, dun, dun. See how the pictures gave her some ideas? How she made her own story just from looking at a picture? The little girl studied the second picture. 
There's that little rabbit again, she thought. Hmm. I wonder what that man is saying to the magnificent ox. I know the secret. Mr. Ox, you must please promise not to tell anyone, but we need your help. Last week, dot, dot, dot. Oh, it sounds like she has already started two different stories. The words began, began to come more and more easily to the little girl. Then the words grew into sentences, and sentences became stories. This one's called The Quest. Their hundred-mile journey began in a sturdy wooden boat. Are we there yet? asked Rabbit. In another two days and one night, replied Lion. Oh, that's a very long time. I forgot. Please remind me again. Where are we going? asked the rabbit. You see how her stories are getting a little longer? Her characters are talking to each other. Oh, here's another story. Tigers. Tigers. Prayer. All the creatures of the land, near and far, would be coming and participations were being made. The clown in the pointed hat would play music on his accordion. The wind, the wind horse would jump through hoops. Tea would be served exactly at noon, for Tiger had something important to say. Wow, those are kind of some wacky stories. Some of them might not even make sense to other people, but they do make sense to the storyteller. The birthday party. And instructed, we arrived at it exactly 3.33. One four-leaf clover and a large pot of hot steeping tea had been purposely placed near the entrance of the woods. An owl, per owl perched in a tree to our left asked, Who? Who? And we promptly answered with the secret password. Our job was to bring the birthday cake, vanilla with vanilla, vanilla cream frosting and black raspberry filling with exactly six, can six candles on top. Pan was very particular, and you could never quite know what to expect, but he insisted on throwing the surprise birthday party for... And a fun thing to do is to finish these stories yourself. Who do you think that birthday party was for? Use your imagination. The magical cloak. One night, a mysterious man in an elaborate cloak sailed into our harbor. Quite quickly, it became obvious to us that he was some kind of wizard or ma magician, for he could blow bubbles in the shapes of things. What was even more extraordinary was the bubbles, once released, became real. Before long, enormous white whales filled our once calm harbor. Amazing as it was to see, we had to do something quickly to... Dot, dot, dot. She's finishing. You can finish that story. The Golden Key. That very morning, Owl told us he could pick us up at midnight. We must be on time and prepared for anything. He held the small golden key tightly in the beak as we flew into the indigo sky. We were ready to face... Ooh, what were they ready to face? Word by word, hour after hour, the little girl imagined an entire story for each page. And when the moon was full and bright, she grew sleepy and drifted off into a dream world woven out of the threads of the pictures and the stories she had imagined. All those stories just from one picture each. When she woke, the little girl felt graceful for the small knowing whisper. Already she missed her new friends, the ox, the owl, and the tiger. She yearned to open the book once again, but the sun was up over the horizon, and the birds were already fluttering about, chirping their morning songs. She did not know what. She did not want to be late for school, so she tied herself 
scooped out the book, and she rushed out the door. Along the path, she met a fox holding a curiously round package. Now, have you guys been seeing this fox throughout? He's been sneaking around on every page. Excuse me, little girl, said the fox. I believe I have the words to your book. I saw them spill away, and because I'm very clever kind of fox, I caught them in my net just before they drifted too far off. Oh, thank you, replied the little girl, feeling a bit confused. Now, please, before you leave, could I bother you for a small favor? asked the fox. Why, of course, answered the little girl. Hmm. So those are those words at the beginning. Remember those words flying out of the book as she walked? That's why there were no words left to read when she got home. The fox thank. Oh, oh, you see how she's helping him? She helped him get those grapes. The fox thanked the little girl, and the little girl thanked the fox, and she gathered the book and the bundle of words and hurried down the path toward school once again. I'm so sorry I'm late, said the little girl, still catching her breath. There was a, a whisper, and I imagined stories for every picture, and, and I overslept in the words. Oh, I didn't know that... They had fallen away, but the clever fox caught them in his net, and, and but I loved, I loved your book, and, 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 oh, oh, I almost forgot. Thank you. I have so many stories to tell you. I can't wait to hear, replied the teacher with a smile. And here we go. This is how she re rewrote a classic story. The Fox and the Grapes. A famished fox saw some clusters of ripe black grapes hanging from a vine. She resorted to all her tricks to get them. And here's where we change the ending. But this fox is of the very clever kind. So she imagined her story differently. And the grapes tasted ever so sweet. The end. Just like how she imagined her story. You can imagine a story or reimagine a story you already know. All you have to do is keep your mind open and maybe look at a beautiful picture. I hope you guys have a beautiful day. Bye guys.